praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, it says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many of us glad to be here this morning? Come on, let's stand on our feet. Come on, how many know we serve a mighty God? Come on, I didn't get the response I was looking for. How many know we serve a mighty God? Come on, lift your hands all over this place. Come on, I just want us just to meditate on Jesus this morning. Come on, get your minds in the service. Come on, lift your hands right now. Come on, we got to receive the blessings of God on this morning. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. I want to hear the church just sing that with me. Sing, bless the Lord. strong voice just think he has done great things he has done great things come on church shout it out he has done he has done One more time. Sing, bless the Lord. Sing, bless the Lord. Oh my, oh my soul. And all that is with me. Oh, bless me. Oh, please. Come on, one more time. Shout it out. Welcome to San Francisco Temple Christian Assembly where Jesus Christ is the center of attraction. Good morning. We do welcome you here to our sanctuary. At this time, we thank God for your being here. We thank the Lord for the presence of the Lord in this place. The Bible lets us know where two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord that he's in the midst. And there's two or three here. We just thank the Lord for his presence on this day. We certainly want to welcome each and every one of you to our special Thanksgiving Day service. We thank the Lord for your joining. We know that you could be doing many other things, especially on a day like this. But we thank the Lord that you have chosen to join us and to be with us for this service. We thank God for the presence of the Lord in each and every one that is in tuning in with us on this morning. God bless you. The 
Bible lets us know that we are to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise and to be thankful unto him. So we certainly thank God for the opportunity to enter into the gates of the Lord where the presence of the Lord is here. We thank God because he's letting us know that his, he's worthy of our praise, worthy of the glory and honor. He said that, it, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And we thank the Lord for drawing us to him. We give him the praise and the glory and the honor. This time we're going to go further into our services. I'm going to ask you to join us now in the scripture reading. So those of you who are able to safely stand wherever you are, wherever you're joining us, we hope that now you can will be able to stand with us in reverence to the reading of the word of God. The word of God comes from Psalms 107 verses 1 and 2. And the word of God reads thus. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us to come together in this place. We thank you, Lord, for those that are joining us over live streaming, those that are joining through the connection of the conference call line, and those that might be watching over YouTube or whatever way, Lord, a medium that you have provided. We thank you, Lord, for the presence of the Lord. We give you thanks for who you are to us, being our Father, God of all flesh. We thank you for your presence in all things because we know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And Lord, on this morning, we know that you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or even think according to the power that worketh in us. So now we ask you, Lord, to have your way on this morning. Move by your power and by your spirit, Lord. God, those that may be bound, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against every foul spirit in the name of Jesus and we bind that devil right now in the name of Jesus and cast him out in the name of Jesus that Lord your word will have free course and be able to operate as you would have it to in the name of Jesus Lord now Lord bless everyone that's tuned in in the name of Jesus let your blessings especially be upon our family our first family in the name of Jesus and we give you the praise and the thanks Lord in the name of Jesus we ask it all Thank God and amen. Well, once again, we greet you on this Thanksgiving morning. We thank God for you being here. We give honor to God. We give honor to our pastor, the Honorable Bishop, Dr. Luther Blackwell. And we thank God for our first founding first lady, former first lady, Dr. Marie McDaniels. And we give honor also to my first lady and my only lady, Mother Dorotha Hutspeth. And we thank God for all that are tuned in and joining us on this morning. And we honor and respect each and every one of you and love you. We thank God for this opportunity to bring forth the word of God on this morning. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. We want you to keep in mind that God knows every situation that you may be going through. And so on this time, as whatever situations you have, conditions you're going through, we want you to know that God sees the end before the beginning. And so that whatever you're going through, he knows how to take, get you out of it. And so God will provide and supply all your need according to your riches and his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You don't have to worry about any lack because God got your back. So this time we have would normally have our announcements, but we on this time are, are going to kind of limit that to one announcement. And that is on tomorrow, 
what is sometimes and commonly called Black Friday, we will not be having our Bible study services. So uh, pass the word around, if you will, and uh, we're going to give you a kind of a break for the entire uh, weekend, remainder of the, the weekend. So God bless you. Once again, we will not be having our Bible study services on tomorrow. So God bless you. And now at this time, we are going to take you to song with our choir. I want you to sit back or get on your feet if you so desire. And let's join the choir and our inspirational choir and the selection that they have chosen for you on this morning. God bless you. Now just shout out, he's a mighty God. Come on, shout it out, he's a mighty God.
somebody put their hands together come on put your hands together come on if you serve a mighty God you ought to stand on your feet right now come on the saints used to say don't wait till the battle is over you ought to shout right now I wouldn't wait till the government says COVID is cured and set free I would just stand on my feet right now and begin to give God praise for the breakthrough Come on, give God praise for the cure right now. Come on, you can praise your way through it right now. Come on, I don't know about you, but I'm glad God kept me. This disease does not have a respected person, young or old. But because we know who he is, because we know by his stripes come on how many know by his blood we're set free come on somebody ought to begin to pray over their house right now come on somebody ought to begin to pray over their families right now come on I need some prayer warriors on this morning who know how to get a prayer through Come on, when all else fails, God has never. Come on, just lift your hands where you are. There's nothing too hard for our God. Come on, lift your hands. There's nothing too hard. For our God There's nothing to hold For our God Come on, you ought to look at your name and say There's nothing to hold For our God Come on, look him in the eye right now and say There's nothing to hold for our God. One more time, tell him there's nothing to hold for our God. Oh, Jesus, we thank you right now. We ask you to come in this place right now. We ask you to rest in this place right now. You're still able, Jesus. You're still a strong tower, Jesus. You're still mighty to save us, Jesus. You're still a deliverer, Jesus. You're still a healer, Jesus. And we know there's nothing too hard for our God. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Come on, how many like me this morning? Oh, Lord, we need you. We need to see you. We're desperate for you. Now let your glory settle here. 
let it settle here. Help me say it pure. Purify our hearts, Lord. Come on, that's all it is. Purify our hearts. Purify our hearts, Lord. Come on, say sanctify our hearts. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Come on, you can lift it up this morning. Sanctify. Sanctify our hearts, Lord. Now I want you to lift both your hands right now and say, oh, Lord, we need you. Oh Lord, we need you. Come on, say it. We need to see you. We need to see you. Come on, say it. We're desperate for you. We're desperate for you. Now let your now let your glory settle here. Come on, somebody ought to ask them right now just to. Settle here. Come on, say settle. Settle here. We need you, Lord, to settle here. Settle here. Now shout out. Now let your glory. Now let your glory settle here. Now we're about to declare and decree some things on this morning. If you need the glory of the Lord in your house. If you need the glory of the Lord on your job, if you need the glory of the Lord in your finances, just shout this out, say, come on and take your seat. I burdens at your feet. With you, we can't be beat. Won't you settle? Won't you settle? Lift your hands right now. Come on, say it. Won't you settle? Won't you settle? We can settle here. Come on, how many need the Lord like I do? Come on, how many need the Lord like I do? Say, won't you settle? Won't you settle? You can settle. You can settle here. We're calling out. We're crying out to you, Lord, right now. We're saying, won't you settle? Oh, Lord. Won't you settle? You can settle. See here. Won't you settle? You can settle. Burdens at your feet. Will you? 
You can settle. Come on. I burn up. You can handle them all, Lord, with you. on this morning, oh God. We thank you right now for being a healer, provider. We thank you for being everything that we need. A shelter in the time of storm. We just thank you right now. Come on, somebody ought to lift their hearts right now. We just thank you right now, Jesus. Oh, won't you settle? thank God for the choir. Amen. The word sometimes gets uh, a little bit easier to receive after we've been inspired by the choir. So we thank God for our inspirational choir who has brought selections of their choosing so that you can realize that God is also a God of music, a God of word, and a God of love. So at this time, we want to at this time, go right on into our word that we have for you from the Lord. This morning, our scripture, as we read, was coming from Psalms 107. And the word of God from that psalm let us know that God wants us to give him thanks and praise. God loves each and every one of us, and he provides and supplies all our need. Therefore, when he does that, he deserves praise. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. So when we receive the blessings of God, we should have no problem giving him thanks, giving him glory and honor. So this morning, we want to recognize what many people consider to be Thanksgiving Day. So Thanksgiving is a time that many people uh, come together in various ways to, uh, to acknowledge and celebrate that day, this Thanksgiving day. And so traditionally, we'll come together sometimes for various things such as food, family, friends, the three F's, and it gives us an opportunity to uh, get together with people who sometimes we haven't seen for quite a while. And so here is an opportunity for us to draw together. Perhaps you're watching or listening with a group of friends and family, and perhaps this is the time now when you all can just get together and, and talk about uh, various things and associate with each other. And this is an opportunity for us now to be able to draw you and bring you together in harmony and love with the word of God. This day, Thanksgiving, is one that uh, has great roots for those that are a part of uh, the United States of America. It, it draws from the, the past when there was some, uh, some persecution of religion back in England some 400 years ago. That time was such where those that were uh, unable to worship in the freeness of the spirit of God had to uh, decided to, to leave, that it was not in their, their best interest to, to be able to be, I mean, to be persecuted when they should have freedom of religion. So 
we're getting closer to the beginning of how it actually got over here. What happened was that they left their nice homes and so on so that they could find a place to worship. They stopped off at a Dutch colony and worshiped there. And for some time they had the freedom there, but it really didn't work out very well because they didn't, weren't able to adapt in terms of their finances to the customs there. They were unable to be able to uh, get meaningful jobs. And so even though they could worship freely, they were unable to be able to maintain their homes financially. So they had to find another place. And then the opportunity came to them to be able to come to the United States of America. At that time, of course, it wasn't that. It was barely occupied very much by uh, those that were not natives of the this area. And so they came here over on what we all know, the Mayflower. Those were the pilgrims. They got over here and they came here looking for a place to where they could earn a good living and worship in the beauty of holiness. And they got here and were able to do that. Long story short, they were, after they were survived a, a very cruel winter to them, after they survived that, they had their first harvest and brought forth, forth in abundance and they celebrated and the governor decided to declare a day of thanksgiving. That was the beginning of our custom of Thanksgiving Day. So from then on forward, uh, it was customary to celebrate the harvest, uh, the abundance of harvests that were being realized. And so they were, they were just as happy as they could be. And then uh, I believe it was Abraham Lincoln that, that instituted the uh, annual day of Thanksgiving. And so from that time on, I believe it was the fourth uh, Thursday of November each year was declared to be a national holiday, Thanksgiving Day. And thus we have it on today, Thanksgiving Day, where we can enjoy the three F's and we can really be able to worship and praise God in the beauty of holiness. Now, now, except for one thing, all that's well and good, but over the years, things have changed. We know that. Uh, we talk about Black Friday on tomorrow. And so things have changed and secularized the, uh, the, the, the real intent of Thanksgiving Day. So many people now, uh, not many who are unchurched, the one day of the year that would be put aside for uh, going to, for giving God thanks and going to church, uh, many people now no longer do that. Why? Because there's so much commercialism that's going on that's trans transformed this day, Thanksgiving, into something that it was never intended to be. And so there, therefore, on this day, we see different activities going on. People watching uh, football and, and uh, just doing all kinds of things that, were, that are totally different from the original intent of worshiping and praising God, giving him glory, giving him thanks. And so with that being the case, what does that, where does that leave the saint of God? Where does that actually put us? We're the ones who's supposed to be praising, praising God, giving him thanks more than anybody. And if anybody should praise the Lord, certainly we have a reason to praise him. Well, that's the reason why Paul said this. He said in Colossians 2 and 16, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. So he, Paul was admonishing us and telling us and letting us know, don't wait for Thanksgiving Day. Uh, well, of course, it wasn't there at that time. But he was saying, basically, don't put everything all on a holy day. Don't look at it as though that this is the only time you can worship and give God the praise or you esteem one day more than another. No, don't do that. Instead, give God thanks every day. Every day, in a sense, should be a Thanksgiving day. 
For the saint of God it is. We give God the praise and the glory and the honor. We lift him up and magnify his name every day because we have a reason to give him thanks. He saved us. He sanctified us, filled us with the Holy Ghost. What has he done for you? Do you have a reason to praise God? I know you do. I know because he's been so good to us. God is good no matter what we're going through. He's yet good. He doesn't change just because of our circumstances. God is good all the time and all the time God is good so on to this day on this morning I want you to know that it's time to give God some praise it's time to give him the thanks it's time not only for this morning but tomorrow and the next day and every day give God thanks for who he is not always for what he's done sure he's been good to us but he's God regardless of the circumstances we find ourselves in. So let's take a look at what the psalmist was talking about. Here's a psalm that was part of a group or subset of psalms that talked about deliverance. Now, all of us, everyone is in need of some kind of deliverance at some time or other because we go through so much. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him out of them all. No matter what we're going through, we have a God and serve a God that can bring us out all right. Bring us out of whatever we're going through. So we have a reason to thank God all the time because he's so good and he's a good God. He is God all by himself. So this scripture beginning here, is part of the group of deliverance. And in this one particular psalm, Psalms 107, the psalmist enumerates a number of things that the children of Israel encountered in their walk in the wilderness. What are you talking about, Brother George? I'm saying that this, when the children of Israel came out of Egypt with the high and mighty hand, when they were able to overcome or God was able to overcome Pharaoh in the midst of the sea. And they got on the other side. They then later found themselves because of unbelief to be wandering in the wilderness some 40 years. During that wilderness walk, though, they found themselves encounter, encountering many hardships, many trials, tribulations and those things are recorded many of those are recorded right there in Psalms 107 but notice what the psalmist how he took care of looking at it and the perspective he had about those challenges as he enumerated them we're going to see here as we go through our even our verses the first two verses that there was a there's a way that we can overcome our challenges and he points this out and that is by giving God the thanks and the praise in the midst of the trials in the midst of the situations and the challenges that all of us face at one time or another and I know some of you may be going through some very challenging times and situations but in the midst of it all Give God the thanks. Give God the praise. Give him the glory because he's worthy of our praise, worthy of the glory and worthy of the honor. Now, sometimes you may say, well, I just don't feel like praising him. I just don't have the, have the, the desire to praise him. I praised him. I gave him thanks last week, last year. That was okay then. And so I stored up a bunch of thanks then, so I don't feel like praising him now. I'm going through too much. Well, if you feel like that, I want you to do just like the psalmist did here. This psalm possibly was written by Moses. There are a number of psalms here in, in, in our entire 150 uh, collection of psalms that were written by various authors. Moses was one of them. And this might well be one because when we see the content of this where Moses or the author will say at this moment, where the author points out several incidents and, and challenges and hardships that we're going through. Moses, of course, was there experiencing that. And so it's very likely that he was the author of this particular Psalms 107. But notice how he approached 
the situation. When Moses recognized the things they went through, he didn't belabor those things, and certainly he didn't do it first. Now, here's the key. Moses, throughout this psalm, admonishes us to give God the thanks, give God the praise. How can you do that? Moses, how, would you, how did you do it? Did you do it? Can we do it today? In the midst of our trials and challenges and situations that are going on all around us, can we give God the praise? I tell you, we can, saints of God. We can do that, but not of ourselves. What Moses did was first give him the praise before thinking about, before talking about all the hardships and problems. And many of us are defeated by the words of, my, of our mouth. The first thing that blurts out is, I'm going through, I'm going through this hardship and, and, and I'm, going to, I'm going to make it. I'm, 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 I'm just going through. I'm just going through. Yeah, I'm going through. Yeah, I'm going through. But you're not really going through. You're complaining most of the times. And that's the problem. You start with your complaints. That's where we defeat it. It's because we said that I'm going through. I'm saying we say we're 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 suffering like a dog. We're 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 bound by this, bound by that. The words of our mouth are snaring us. We're saying all these bad things, and that's what's on our minds. But Moses took a different point of view. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. So that's what I want us to focus on on today. Give thanks unto the Lord. Sure, we have problems. I got problems. You got problems. But the problems don't have me because I'm willing to give God the thanks first. Learn to give God the thanks first. Don't be ensnared by your problems, your challenges, and your complaints that you're going through, that you're suffering. Give God thanks first. When we learn to thank God, recognize him He's bigger than any problem, situation, circumstance that we may encounter. Learn to say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Now look at what this psalmist is doing. This psalmist is saying that he's got the victory. He's letting us know already that he's got the victory. That's why he's able to help you. You can't help somebody else and you... Are, all moaning and complaining and going through your little situations and trials and tribulations. How are you going to help me and you complaining more than me? I got to console and help you. No, but the way to do it, saints of God, is to first give God the praise. Recognize him. Give him the thanks. And then when you look at your circumstances, you're not defeated. In fact, you have the victory. You're turning those circumstances into things that you have conquered. Because now you're looking at it from God's perspective. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And then do all the other things fall in line. Those challenges become reasons to praise him more. So you're not only praising him because you have started the praise and gotten things rolling, but those things that seem to be, uh, that would otherwise defeat you, have now become reasons to give God more glory, to give him more thanks, and to give him more praise, because you have the victory over those. Several times during this Psalm 107, the writer tells us to, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. He tells us encouraging words to do. And he does that before the next set of challenges. 
But when the next set of challenges are presented, those are no longer complaints. Those are no longer situations that would get you down. They become reasons for the thanks that you've already given him. I don't know if you're getting this like I am, but I'll tell you this. I have the victory because I'm giving God the praise first. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody here who wants to give God just a little moment of praise right now? Give him a little thanks right now. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Moses found out that the more we give God praise and glory and honor, the more he's going to give us strength to be able to go through whatever challenges we face. So Moses said, oh, give thanks. And once again, that's, that's not only a command that God has given us through him, but Moses first had the victory himself. So now he's in a position to encourage us and admonish us to do the same. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Try it. Just go ahead and try it. I'm going to take a moment out right now for you to try this. Just go ahead and look at your situation. Look at your problems and think about this first. Before you start listing all of them, just go ahead with a thanks. Just tell yourself, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. So Moses did that. And it was easy for him then to put his problems and situations in the background and to focus more on God. So he said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why was he able to do that? Why did he say that? He said it because he is good. Do I have a witness out there? Anybody know that the Lord is good? The Lord is good. That's a reason that I have to give him thanks. So I can easily, it's easier now, knowing with that reinforcement that he's good for me to do it again. Watch. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And you can do it too. It becomes easier when you start off with the praise, start off with the honor, giving, giving it to the Lord first. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Why? Because he's good. What else? His mercy endureth forever. That's a reason to thank him even more. And now, as if that wasn't enough to encourage you to thank him, to give him praise and glory and honor, if that wasn't enough, Moses continued on and then giving you uh, an admonition to take it further. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now, now, now that is giving you kind of like permission. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But it's also an admonition to the point that is encouraging you to go ahead and testify. You know, because of the words that come out of our mouth, we are encouraged or discouraged by that. So if we testify and tell the goodness of the Lord, that encourages us some, some more to go forward. That testimony is important. I'm not talking about you have to testify in front of the saints all the time, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, that with a mighty burning fire, do speak with tongues as the Spirit of the Lord give utterance. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is the testimony of your life. Moses was encouraging us to let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let your life, so that when you speak, your life will mirror what you say. So when you say so, back it up with the life. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. In other words, you, have, you recognize that the, it was the Lord that drew you out, that paid the price of your salvation and allowed you to be able to, to say, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. So now let the redeemed, you are redeemed. You are redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Speak, say it. 
Say it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Whom he has redeemed out of the hands of the enemy. God did it. You didn't do it. So no need of you holding on, holding back. Just trust the Lord whom he it already said, whom he had redeemed from the hands of the enemy. Anybody been redeemed out there? Anybody have a testimony? Tell it, but make sure your life first backs up what you're going to say. No need of talking about it and you aren't living it. Because somebody's going to see that. So it took, it took Moses that to bring us to this point. When God does something for us, we have an obligation to tell it. Now, I, like I said, I'm not talking about just standing up in front of somebody that's already saved, preaching to the choir. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about tell it so that your life is demonstrating what you say. So when you talk with someone uh, who's unchurched, someone who doesn't know the Lord, when you say what the Lord has done for you, they, don't, they, they can't spot your life for what you do behind closed doors. There's a consequence in failing to tell it, to give God the glory. Many people have suffered a consequence because they don't give God the glory. Now, I'm not talking about a, a situation where, well, I'm just not going to say anything. That's not giving God glory. And it's not what God is looking for. God is looking for us to be bold witnesses for him. So that when he does something for us, when he is somebody to us, then we tell it. We testify. it. You may not have been saved a long time. So you don't have a long litany of things to, to, to talk about. But you can say this. The Lord saved me. Whereof I'm glad. Nebuchadnezzar, a king that we see in Daniel fourth chapter, was one such person who failed to give God the glory. He had a dream once, and his henchmen, his soothsayers, and so on, could not figure it out. In fact, they, they couldn't, didn't even know the dream, really. And so it took Daniel to bring forth the dream. Several things were in that dream that puzzled him, even as Daniel explained it. But Daniel then gave him the interpretation. There was a tree, there was a stump, there were... Uh, branches too. Uh, there were several things in it. You can read that in the fourth chapter of Daniel. But the point I want to bring out is that was a typical figure of the king, the king himself. And Daniel told him, if we go here in Daniel 4, beginning at verse 27, it says, wherefore, O king, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee. And break off that, the, thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. It, if it may be lengthening of thy tranquility. He had it all together in terms of the way he saw it. But Daniel told him that if you don't, it's going to be a consequence of your unrighteousness towards other people. And the Bible says in the next verse, all of this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. So that at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king was so proud of his accomplishments. Talked about, uh, it's not this, the great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my, by the might of my power. That was him talking. For the honor of my majesty. But while the words were yet in his mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen and seven times shall pass over thee 
until thou know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers and his nails like birds' claws. This is the consequence of what Nebuchadnezzar's pride gave him. His thoughts, his words didn't give God the thanks, didn't give God the praise or the glory or the honor that was due him. He didn't do all that himself. We cannot boast. The Bible lets us know that pride cometh before destruction. He should have known even from the dream that Daniel interpreted to him that trouble was coming if he didn't give God the glory for what had been accomplished under his watch. And we see things like this happening today. Saints, we should realize that God got his eyes on everyone. Nothing escapes God. We may see things going on all around us and wonder when, why hasn't God interceded, intervened in the situation? Why is it that it's allowed to go on and on? Well, I want you to know this, that God is watching. God knows when to do what. It's all in his power. Give him space to work. Allow him to be able to work. You stay prayerful and you stay, stay trusting in God and you stay praising him, giving him thanks. And all the while you will be protected, you will be covered. But in the meantime, God is working on somebody else. And this is our opportunity to pray. Don't let personalities, don't let sin, don't let other things come between you and the command of God. Who, who told us to pray for those in authority, kings and others. We have a duty to pray for them on their behalf. We shouldn't want any soul lost. The, 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 I, I would just say that what hell has to offer, the one who's headed there, you just wonder like, why they do stuff. Maybe they don't know about hell. Maybe they do or don't care. But what is it in hell do they want? I don't know. There's nothing that any of us should want in hell. But the Bible lets us know about Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of the days, it says, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes into heaven. See, there's hope for our leaders, for our rulers. There's hope. And my understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. This is Nebuchadnezzar talking now. A changed man, a changed heart. And he says, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven. All whose works are truth and his ways judgment and those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. I know I've been there, done that. Somebody out there needs your prayers for a changed life. Don't sweep them under the rug and say no good for no better for you. But pray for them that the Lord can change their hearts. And saints, I want you to know this before we close out. This one thing here is that we have a choice in giving God praise. We, 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 we have a choice. When, when the psalmist said, the re, let the redeemer of the Lord say so, there's no, no mandate. Nobody's putting a gun to your face to make you do. No. It says, let the redeem. God is looking for somebody to worship him in spirit and truth. In truth, truth meaning that is coming from your heart, not externally. 
that you're being made mandated to praise him? No, let it be something out of the heart. If there's good in your heart, let it proceed forward. We see how that we can be influenced by other people in many ways, but we should never let anyone take away our choice to praise God. We should realize that we have the right to praise him and not let other people dictate to us about whether we should praise him or not. I want to go to another final scripture here. Luke 17 chapter verses 11 to 19. Take a look at how choice plays into our many actions. We do have a choice. The Bible begins here, says, and it came to pass as he, Jesus, of course, went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. They had to do that. They didn't have any other right to do. Lepers were put into a, outside of the city limits. They were put into a, a camp. And they couldn't get in, they couldn't go anywhere. They couldn't even, and, and they had to keep distance with anybody that came near. At least six feet, at least six. Social distancing didn't just start. They were, and then if, if anyone uh, came near them and they had to holler out, unclean, 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 so that no one would get near them and catch or whatever they may have, that leprosy. So uh, they, they were ostracized to even start with. But they, uh, recognizing and respecting Jesus, didn't come near him and gang on him and gang all around him, 10 of them. Instead, they stood up and, and hollered to Jesus, lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus turned around, and when he saw them, he said unto them, Go, show yourselves unto the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Why did he first tell them to go? Because they were healed right then. They were healed. Uh, many times we, just in the natural, may be wounded or may have a sickness, and then take something or some kind of way the Lord uh, divinely or otherwise, we get healed, we get uh, treated. But it doesn't mean that all of the appearances of that situation are gone. No, it doesn't. What it means is, on the other hand, that you're healed, but it's by faith to believe that you have been healed. And they did take that walk of faith. When he said, go, show yourselves to the priest, that was a mandate that the priest who only had the, the authority to declare that you're no longer a leper, head there because you're cleansed. And when you're there, you're, the priest will confirm the truth. That's why we as saints of God, we don't have to worry about uh, uh, our healing. If God heals us, it's okay that, that we go to our regular appointment to get checked out or whatever. Because... We're healed. Don't say, well, I, I'm not going to go to the doctor. I'm afraid. I know I have a, my regular checkup on next week, and, and, this, and the preacher put his hands, laid his hands on me, and I'm supposed to be healed, but I'm not going to take a chance because he might still find a trace of cancer. Listen, if you're healed, you're healed, and it'll be, it will be confirmed by the doctor if you have the faith to believe. So they walked. They began to walk, and as they went, they were cleansed. So God has the power. It's in a word. It's in his word. Go and show yourself unto the priest. But one of them, it says in verse 15, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. I could imagine he knew about the psalmist and said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. And he hollered out loudly, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Lord. 
Is there anybody who believes that the Lord has healed them? It's okay to give God the thanks. It's okay to give him the praise and the glory. He's worthy of our praise. The Bible says then that he came and fell down before Jesus. And he glorified the Lord. He fell down on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. But the strangest thing is he was a Samaritan. Now, Samaritans don't have anything to do with Jews. We know that from your reading of the Bible and study of the Bible. Jesus said to him, were there not ten that were cleansed? But where are the nine? There were not found here. There, there are not found that return to give God glory, save this stranger. Considered to be a stranger. Because he was a Samaritan. And he said unto him, Arise, go that way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I thought all of them, Brother George, were cleansed. They were cleansed. The outward, the natural, they were cleansed. When they got to the priest, I'm sure all of the nine, and including the tenth, were declared free of leprosy. But what was the difference? Jesus said, Thy faith have made thee whole, whole spiritually, whole spiritually. You can be healed by the Lord beyond just the outside appearance. The Bible lets us know, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over them, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. There's more to it than outward healing. There's a spiritual healing that many people are going through right now or needing right now. Why? Because they have something on the inside that has never been cured, and that is sin. I want you to know that on today can be your day to overcome every obstacle in your path. And not only that, it can be a day of spiritual awakening. But you have to recognize the one that's going to do it. You can begin, whether you saved or not, to praise and give God some glory. Because God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you ask or even think. So we're going to offer prayer that not only what you may go, be going through in challenges, things that have had you complaining, bawling, and all that, I want you to know you can be delivered from all of that. You can be delivered today. Today is a day of thanksgiving. But give him the thanks and give him the praise before you complain about your problems. And God will not only deliver you from your problems, situations and problems by faith and trust in him he will heal the inside as well let us pray heavenly father we thank you for blessing us to speak from your holy word we thank you for giving us the words of life to share and lord we know that your word will never ever return unto you void but it will accomplish that which you please and it will prosper in the thing whereto you send it. Now, Lord, we have spoken the word of God. We pray and trust and believe that it has gone forth under the anointing of the Holy Ghost and that it has gone forth to destroy yokes, heal bodies, bring forth salvation. And we thank you for it now so that even now, Anyone who is sick is declared healed by faith in Jesus' name because they're giving you the glory first. They're giving you the honor first, giving you the thanks first, and then receiving the blessings of God. And we thank you for it all now. For everyone, let me say this before we close out, everyone who has accepted Jesus Christ because of the word of God and accepted your healing, hold on to that because you've already started the process by giving him the glory, honor, and praise. 
and asking for forgiveness, the Lord, if you've asked for forgiveness, I'm going to include that too. Lord, everybody in the name of Jesus, who at this time will ask you to forgive me, forgive, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it now. And who recognizes that, God, you raised up Jesus from the dead and that they can that Jesus now has come to live in them eternally. God, in the name of Jesus, each such a one receive with your salvation and healing in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. So now you're healed from the outside as well as inside. But this time your healing is from inside out, not just externally, but inside out. God bless you. Be blessed on this Thanksgiving day. Remember on tomorrow, no Bible study service. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving day to you. God bless you. We'll see you on our next broadcast.